Hey lovelies, it's MLP with Lovely Lulu Designs, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you a simple hack for ombreing or blending more than one glitter color together. This hack is really helpful for people who are struggling with gradual smooth blends, for blending high contrast colors together, such as black and white, uh, for tumblers where handles, um, sorry, with handles where the glitter contamination can happen where the handle meets the tumbler, um, and if you have multiple orders and you're wanting to try to get consistency across projects. For this blend, I use rose gold from M and Cat Glitter Factory, as well as a more opaque white flat glitter. The equivalent to this glitter um, is Flurries from M and Cat. I use the opaque white to cover a scratch I accidentally made on the base coat of paint, as well as the rose gold overspray, which occurred because the paint can ran out and I didn't have any more paint to blend it properly. Um, I did end up doing a second coat of glitter on this tumbler and used glacial ice as my white instead of the opaque white to add extra sparkles. So you'll see that on the finished product. Uh, glacial ice is also a true white, but maintains its sparkle under epoxy. I will post uh, links to all of these colors in the description of this video. Um, also, I used a tea strainer to help blend my colors. Um, I will put a link for the one I purchased in the description as well. Please keep in mind though that once you've used an item for your crafting, it is no longer food safe, so designate that item for crafting only. Okay guys, so here I have my cup which has a thin layer of epoxy on it and I have a piece of parchment paper underneath it. Again, just like last time I did a, a epoxy method tumbler um, for glitter, I put the, or the parchment paper down after I put the epoxy on so that way in case anything dripped when I was applying it, it wouldn't fall onto the parchment paper. I want this to be clean so that when glitter falls on it, it's not going to stick to it. It's just going to slide right off. I'm also going to stick another piece of paper under it. Oh, no, I'm not. I don't need it. I'm just going to use the parchment paper. Okay. I'm going to start with this one here with the white on the top and the rose gold on the bottom. So just to start me off, I'm just going to add white glitter solid on the top. Now when you're doing the epoxy method, what you're looking for is going to be um, wet spots in your epoxy. Um, if it looks wet in the glitter, it means that you have to put a little bit more on. I'm just going to tap that off a little bit. And I'm going to get inside that handle as well. So I want that part to be completely white. Just right where the, right where the handle meets the cup. Just kind of make sure that you don't have any of that white paint showing through. Okay, that's good. Okay, so I'm just gonna bang this on here a couple times, knock off any loose glitter. And I started with my white because if I get a little bit of white fall off into the rose gold, it's not gonna contaminate my rose gold, but rose gold will contaminate a white jar. Okay. Now I'm going to take the rose gold and I'm going to do the same on the opposite end. This is such a pretty, pretty, pretty rose gold. It's a little more pink than the other one that I have in, which I like. Okay, and same deal. I'm going to just go inside that handle and make sure that I fill it right up with the rose gold because I don't want any white right where the handle meets the um, where the handle meets the tumbler. And this is one of the nice things about the way that I've fashioned my turner, being able to pop this off because I can just do the bottoms this way. Um, I don't know how you guys do it when you can't take your cup off. It seems like a nightmare to me. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap 
my bottle a little bit higher up. Just kind of spread it just a little bit so I don't have such a hard line there. going to do is I'm going to take a small cup and I'm going to take a small spoon. See. Sorry, I have to locate the spoon. Um, this one here is just a 1 8 teaspoon that I'm using. What I'm going to do I'm going to take just a couple scoops of the rose gold, maybe three. And I'm going to clean my spoon off. I don't want any rose gold left over because I'm going to be dipping it into my white and I don't want to accidentally contaminate my rose gold, or sorry, my white with rose gold. I'm going to start with just a little bit. There is no exact measurements that I do on this. I really just eyeball this and I have from the start. And then I'm just going to take it and I'm going to shake it up. So I'm like literally just mixing a small amount of white in with my rose gold glitter. It's not at any particular ratio. It's not like a three to one or anything like that. Um, I just kind of eyeballed it. And then I'm going to move that into my tea strainer like so. Now I'm just going to take my tea strainer up above and I'm just going to shake it here close to that line that I just finished making. Don't forget to do the inside of your handle. You have to do a little bit of extra care when you're doing, and even inside, like where the handle blocks the tumbler. You have to make sure you do just a little bit of extra care when you're doing a tumbler with a handle. Okay, and whatever knocks off here, I'm gonna take that whole amount, everything I just mixed, knock it back here. And I'm going to put that back into that mixing cup that I had. Hold on. And now I'm going to add some more white. I'm going to make it heavier in with the white. And then the same thing I did last time, I'm just going to shake that up and mix my glitters together. And you're going to see again that it's just getting lighter. And I'm going to take that, dump it into my little tea strainer. And same thing, now when I'm starting this, I'm starting it back over. I'm overlapping the last line I just did in order to get that blend. Make sure again, take special care with that handle. So I'm only going slightly higher than what I did before. Knock it all off. Put it back in my mixing cup and I'm going to do this one more time with the white, mixing a little bit more white in. Here it is. 
And if you find when you're doing this, like, and you're looking at your blend on your cup and you're looking at how dark your color is, you might find that you need to, to even lighten it further still. Um, I did a pretty good scoop of the white in that one. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, but again, when you have colors that contrast more, the dark color will take over your lighter color more. So you might need to put um, a ratio of the lighter color higher than that of the darker than what I've done here. Um, it all depends on the colors that you're mixing. And then again, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna knock it into my tea strainer. And I'm gonna go again right above just slightly above where I last did it. And I'm doing this at a distance and now I'm gonna be finely sprinkling it. Okay, and again, make sure you get your handle and in behind your handle. You do not want to miss the ombre on your cup. And the reason why it's particularly important that you're not missing it on your handle is because you're not gonna be able to recreate the exact same ratios because you're not measuring it out. So don't forget that handle. Okay. Now I'm gonna take what fell off here, put it back into my tea strainer. And I'm just gonna go over the lower part of my tumbler that I did first with this color, with that lighter color, and just kind of recoat that bottom part so that if anything was missed, it's gonna help bring that blend down in a little bit. And it, it did take over quite a bit, but when you knock it off, you'll see that it's not all taken over this much. Kind of know what I mean when you um, brush it or knock it or anything like that. So you can already see a lot more of the white that just goes added on already fell off. Okay. So I have very little extra on this. Um, if you make molds like keychains, you can always throw this in a mold. Um, if you are someone who uh, has a, a pile or, or a container of glitters um, with like all mixes that you make, like your own custom mixes, you can throw that in there. Um, if this is colors that you frequently mix together, you can save it in a small container. Like I said, for me, white and um, rose gold are very popular, so I can just save this. Um, or if it's really small, negligent amount, you can always just get rid of it. But I didn't say that because nobody wants to waste glitter goodness. All right, so now I'm just gonna knock it a couple more times, make sure I've got off as much pink as I can. I'm going to clean, wipe off this guy from any pink or rose gold glitter. And now I'm gonna come in with my white and I'm just gonna cover it the rest of the way. So when I'm doing this, I am going over just the top part of where I did that original blend. So that line right here where I was ombreing it. Okay, now before I knock my cup, I'm just going to put this white back in. I'm just going to inspect my handle and make sure I didn't miss any parts. I did. Alright. 
Okay, so that's basically it. Let me give you guys a close up there of that ombre. It has a really nice subtle effect. Um, so it's a good hack. Uh, I am going to need to do another coat on this because um, I had a couple areas where my epoxy repelled for whatever reason and it didn't quite cover it. Um, and I want to go over the white with a more sparkly white now that I know that I've covered the um, spray paint splatters that I had. So I will actually do one more coat on this on this cup. I don't usually do that, but, um, but there it is. So now you guys can kind of see um, the little hack that I have here. If you are doing this or wanting to do this with a chunkier glitter than the extra fines, I've done this successfully with um, a chunky and a fine or extra fine. Obviously I couldn't use the tea strainer for that because um, it wouldn't go through the little holes in the strainer. But I just put it in my mixing cup and I just kind of did it up from a higher height like that and uh, it did work out pretty well for me with that too. Um, so again, you know, this is this does have a little bit of waste on glitter. Um, it's not the fastest way of doing it, but it does give you really pretty, really consistent results. Since I'm doing it on the turner, my line is gonna be the same across it. Um, and that's kind of a nice perk. If you have something with the handle, you're not gonna have to worry about glitter contamination where the handle meets the, um, the glitter from applying your glitter on an angle downwards or upwards or whatever it is that you do. Um, so I hope this is helpful to some people. Um, and again, you know, like if you're starting off, this is a great way to get used to how glitters mix together, um, the colors that they make when they mix together and sort of how glitter falls. Um, I learned a lot from doing this and, uh, now I can do more free handed ways of it, um, without needing to use this, this method. And that's because I'm familiar now with how glitter works when I'm, when I'm working with it. Okay. I hope this was helpful. Any questions, put them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw and haven't yet subscribed, you can do so by clicking on my logo above. Also, to be notified of any future videos I post, please be sure to tickle that little bell icon. If you are new to my channel and wanna check out some other videos, you can check out that video right there or my playlist. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.